our episode of Random Wednesday, we have a lot of construction happening. That Ooh. is right. Send back by popular demand, we are going to build a fort at the fort because Ooh. building forts is just so much fun. Oh, mm -hmm. it's the best. Never too old to build forts. And if you can't get enough of forts, we're also going to be building a shelter after that. So yeah, like, I think a how-to, how-to build a shelter. Yes. Oh, so shelter. many things to learn in construction. Guys, it's yeah. like indoor forts, outdoor forts, building everywhere. 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 Well, we are going to hear about Rachel's testimony of how God's been building in her life after that. Amazing. So much fun. Mm -hmm. Off we go. Random Wednesday. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Random Wednesday. You might have noticed that we're not usually here on Random Wednesday, but today we're at the fort. The fort? Ooh, the fort, yes. And we are gonna be building an indoor shelter. Um, one might say a fort. Like a so fort at the fort. fort? Like fortception? Like wow. fortception, like a fort at the fort. So come along with us as we show you how we're gonna throw up some materials that we have and make an awesome, super big fort. It's gonna be cozy, it's gonna be fun, um, and we'll see you when we're done. Scissors, kids. and welcome to the fort at the fort. This is our lantern, it's pretty cool. This is our TV where we can watch a lot of fun stuff, including camp for you. These are our succulents, they're pretty exciting. Um, this is Ryan, he's usually sleeping. That's Miranda and Eden, hey. they're doing a crossword. <laughs> and this is Josh, my couch friend. So as you can see, our fort has been made. Um, I would say we had a lot of fun building it. We used approximately one million clothes pins. So make sure you have stuff to fasten your fort because you might need it. And even more than the fun we had building it, I think we're just really enjoying chilling in here. It's actually so cozy and nice. It's my new so favorite spot. It's Nathan's new favorite spot. And we hope that this gave you some inspiration for maybe a fort you could build at home. Bye! How to. 
All right, we are back with another how-to segment, Ryan, and I am super excited. But it's under construction week, which is like building stuff. So I think we should do a how-to on building stuff. What do you think? Yeah. And what is it? What should we build? Maybe a shelter. You know what? Shelters are super fun, and you know what? If you ever need it, super practical. So. Christy has some supplies and is waiting for us out already. So let's go catch up with her and teach these guys how to build a shelter. All right, let's go. All right, we are here at our spot where we are gonna build our shelters. Christy met us out here and she has her supplies. But before we talk about that, we are gonna build two types of shelter today. We are gonna build one shelter that has a single mounting point onto a tree and then kind of spreads out to the ground beside it. And then the second shelter is gonna be in between two trees where you kind of put a rope across, make a little, it looks like a tent in the end, yeah. actually. So um, when we are doing this though, we are coming prepared for this. So we have three things that we need. We have rope, we have tent pegs, and we have a tarp. And with these three things, we're gonna build both these shelters. So it's gonna be lots of fun. And we are gonna start first with the shelter with the single mounting point on the tree. So let's go. All right, to start the single mount shelter, what we're gonna do, we, we have our tree and we are gonna wrap a rope around a couple times. If there's a spot where like a branch is sticking out, that would be super helpful. But for where we are, we have just this one nice tree. We're gonna wrap the rope around a couple times and we're gonna tie the tarp nice and tight to the tree. So Christy and uh, Ryan, Christy and Ryan are gonna get started. Our tarp tied up to the tree. We put it, we put it about four, four and a half feet off the ground. You want a little bit of room so that you can actually get inside of your shelter. Um, a good knot to use when tying to the tree is a bowline knot. That way it'll hold it in really secure in that spot. But the next step, we have it up. We are gonna spread the tarp out to kind of give as much shelter space as we can. And in the corners, we're gonna put tent pegs to hold our shelter in place. So we're gonna do that next. All right, and just like that, our shelter is up. You might've saw Ryan went and grabbed a rock to kind of help put the pegs in. Some of the ground here wasn't actually that soft. And he, he hit the pegs down and it looks like they both fit inside. So let's go take a peek and see what it looks like inside. <laughs> so one big advantage of doing a shelter like this is this side here where it's nice and flat if you point that towards the wind the wind is actually just going to go up and over your shelter and it'll get you out of the wind and if you do it nice and tight like this to a tree as well um, the cover from the tree will kind of stop any weather that is coming um, rain or whatnot and you'll stay nice and dry so yeah this is a great shelter for one maybe two people and now we are gonna quickly tear down and go to our shelter number two. All right, we are gonna build our second shelter. So this one is gonna be in between two trees. Um, a quick overview of what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a rope, tie it. We're gonna use that bowline knot again and tie it in between those two trees. And then we're gonna hang the tarp over top. It's gonna look very much like a tent. And then in the corners, we're gonna peg those corners down again, all right? So this is a little bit bigger of a shelter. Um, if you're in somewhere, maybe not so much wind, um, this would be a great way to protect yourself. So uh, let's get started. All right, so we got our rope up in between. We just put the tarp on top. Um, one thing, this this tent doesn't need to be super tall. Like when we're out in the wilderness, we're not on vacation. It just needs to be tall enough that we can get un underneath and, and sleep. So I think it's gonna be really important um, for the tarp to be touching the ground. And we're gonna put our pegs in right away and it'll just protect from any wildlife or water or anything like that. So we're gonna peg it down and then see what it looks like inside. All right, so we have our shelter. It's complete. We're gonna jump in right away. But before we go in, one thing that's kind of important is 
when you are building a shelter, um, we did this before we came down, is we moved a bunch of sticks and stuff that are gonna be in the way of our shelter. Because when you go in, you don't want a stick poking you in the back or anything like that. So you want to clear your space. We are we're somewhere where there's a bunch of grass, which is nice and soft, um, which would make a great place to sleep on. So yeah, we are going to jump in and take a look at what our second shelter looks like. All right, and that is how to build a couple of different shelters. We had lots of fun out here and we hope that you guys actually do this at home. You can do it in your basement or in your backyard or you know what? Just be creative. We want to see some pictures and videos of shelters that you guys build at home. And yeah, that was a lot of fun and we'll see you later. Story time. Hey guys, it's Rachel here. Um, some of you guys might also know me as Guava. And I did share my story with you all last year on Camp For You, but I wanted to share just a little piece of it this year. So yeah, as it probably was for you, this year was hard. It was not an easy time. Um, there was a lot of disappointments, a lot of plans that were canceled, school went online, which I don't know about you guys, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a tough year of, of things that just didn't go the way that we expected. And I have often struggled to find my identity in doing things, in trying to be involved in all these church groups or volunteering. And all of a sudden that was all kind of taken away. We couldn't go to those church groups anymore. Maybe we, I couldn't volunteer in the ways I used to or be a part of all the things I used to be a part of. Um, and so all of a sudden it was all taken away and I felt pretty lost. But then as things started to open up again, I was able to join them again, which maybe seems great. And in some ways it was, but I started to do again. I started to be so busy that I felt so tired. I was exhausted. I was burnt out. Um, I just for some reason thought that God would love me more if I was doing more, if I was involved in more, especially church things, um, which that's not the case at all. Because even by being so busy, um, I wasn't spending any time with God. I was just tired and exhausted and would usually go to bed too late and would not have that um, quiet time with God that he just wants to spend time with me. Um, so yeah, I didn't feel like I grew in my faith at all this past year. But recently I actually had a friend that prayed for me and she reminded me that even in this season where it was really hard and where I didn't feel like God was doing much, that he was still shaping me and refining me. And I'm gonna let you know what refining means. It's a little bit of a tricky word, but it means to improve something by making small changes, in particular making um, changes that are more subtle. So essentially it's like God was taking um, he was removing those lies that I thought about him, that I had to earn his, his love or his approval or that my identity was found in others. And if I, you know, couldn't show up to an event that people would somehow think less of me when that wasn't true at all. And so it was like in this, pa in this past year, God was reminding me that those things weren't true um, and that he actually just loves me no matter what. And so, yeah, there are two verses that really spoke to me this past year that I'm going to read for you guys. So the first one is Ephesians 2 verse 8, which says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. And then 2 Corinthians 12 9, which says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. These verses essentially just say that there's nothing I can do to earn God's love. Um, and that I, we are loved by God just because of his grace, that he died on the cross because he loves us. And the other verse just um, reminded me that it doesn't matter if I feel like I failed or I've not done enough, that when I am weak, God is strong. And when I am struggling, it just makes me have to rely on God all the more. Um, so yeah, my faith, you can almost say it's been under construction. Um, it's like I had this foundation built and I believed 
in some ways that, yeah, I had to do more to earn God's love. And then in this other block of wood, I thought, yeah, I just need to please people. And then that's where my identity is found and then I'll be happy. Um, but those pieces of wood were not healthy. They were rotting. They were not the truth of who God is. And so it was like God is taking those bricks, though I couldn't really tell, and replacing them with healthy blocks of wood that were just the truth of who God is, that he loves me no matter what, that um, when I am struggling, that he, he still can give me peace and he can give me joy. And even in those things that I was so busy doing, God still blessed me in those things and taught me things like, in the community groups I was involved in, um, I was able to become more passionate about the Bible and I was able to be encouraged by my family who would challenge me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to share about this past year, just a little part of my story. And I hope that can encourage you that, that God loves you no matter what, that there's nothing, nothing we can do that will change the way that he loves us. And when we are struggling, God is able to just work and his power can cover our weaknesses. And even in the midst of this season, that's been hard and it's been full of hurt. I can still have God's love and know that he loves me and I can still have his joy too. So yeah, that's just a part of my story I wanna share with you guys and I hope it can encourage you today. Wow guys, that was a lot of forts that we had going on today. But so they look many. awesome. Yeah, I feel like I'm not ready, ready for a summer outdoors. I'm gonna give myself some shade outside. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give some good spaces to play. I'm ready. So, so I'm much ready. fun. So much fun already too, yeah. right? And with that, today's Wednesday, which means tomorrow's Thursday, which means you have like a day and a little bit to send us in highlight submissions yeah. for the highlight video on Friday. And we want all of you to do it at home because when you guys send us stuff in, it makes the highlight video awesome yeah. and we just love seeing what you guys are doing at home. But with that, there are challenges already. So many. So many. So we're gonna start on Monday with Nathan and Tori. You guys learned how to build bird houses. So we wanna see pictures of what those bird houses look like. Second, today was a fort day. We wanna see forts, whether it's inside fort or an outside shelter, we wanna see that. And always, if you just watched last week's and you saw the challenges for then, you can send challenges from any week at any time, right. which is things like the handshake, or Lego. Lego or tie dyeing your shirt. Mm -hmm. Send us in anything camp for you related that you're doing and we will make sure it gets in the highlight video. Yeah. Okay. This week was so fun. I loved the theme of construction and that all of these challenges are all about construction. And of course this summer we're gonna talk about under construction in our chapels. But I was thinking that maybe we could like do each week a different theme. I that love we can build our theme. stuff around. Just like you. Yeah. It's always a good thing. I mean, like, not eight themes. Ooh. Yeah. So that could be crazy. So we want you guys to send us your guesses about what kind of themes our week's white might be all about, even though we're going to stick with under construction for chapels. But, nope. Yeah. No hints. Nope. Just send us guesses. Absolutely. We're excited to see what you think is going to happen. Sweet. I can't for you this summer. See you later.